Hello everybody, it is Margaret and welcome to my channel, Texas Gal Treasures. In today's video, we are going to be talking about some of my best sales of 2020. These are all items that are not jewelry related because I did those in a separate video. These are all hard goods, vintage items, purses, things of that nature. Uh, so these are things that sold either on eBay or Etsy. I chose to share both of those because I end up cross-listing pretty much everything on both platforms. And so this is just a great way for you to see what kinds of things I was selling throughout 2020, what kind of prices I got, why, why I picked certain things up and why I priced them the way I did. So if you are looking for more information like that, then this is definitely the video for you. Okay, I am live. I don't know why I said it like that. Okay, uh, but I am live. So if you're here live, come over and say hello in the chat and uh, we'll get started in just a second. So a lot of the things that I picked up today uh, or that I'm going to share today, I picked up when I went to the Goodwill outlet. I haven't been to the Goodwill outlet in like a year because of the coronavirus. So I miss it a lot. A lot, a lot. So I can't wait till I can start going again. Um, but I don't think they're allowing kids to go. And so that's just not going to happen, right? All right. So hello in the chat. Hi, Karen. I'm not going to talk throughout the whole thing, but I wanted to say some quick hellos real fast. Uh, or I'll answer questions, I should say, as we go. Hi, Lenny. Hello, Susan. Hello, Sue and everybody. Hello, 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 everybody. Uh, also, just as a quick uh, housekeeping, this evening I am going to be live again at 7 Central with uh, the guys for Merch Talk. We're going to try to start doing Merch Talk once a month, and I'm trying to work in a few other print-on-demand videos as we go along, um, maybe one a week or so, uh, just to get myself motivated again to start, not like I stopped doing print-on-demand, but just it's money that I could be making and passively, which is really nice. So I'll probably start doing maybe one a week. But anyway, we'll be live tonight if you want to if you want to get motivated with me. All right, let's jump in. Oh, fun. Oh, yay. <laughs> You're up in the Gatlinburg Mountains. That sounds really nice. <sighs> ah, okay, <laughs> I meant to click it off. All right, let's start. Uh, and again, these are eBay and Etsy sales. So I will let you know. Oh, oh, and I'm going to have this question, I'm sure. If you notice, they're all going to say Etsy at the top. But that's because eBay, after 90 days, rolls those listings away. And so you don't have access to the pictures and descriptions and stuff. But on Etsy, whenever something's sold on eBay, I can deactivate that listing. But I still have access to the photos and the descriptions and everything. So I was able to show you those items, but on It'll say Etsy, but I'll tell you what it sold for on eBay. Okay, and I will, as we go, if you have questions about the things as we're going along, then let me know in the chat and I will answer questions. Okay, this guy, first of all, I love selling figural items. And what I mean by that are animals or anything that someone collects, right? A figure of something. So this has got a lot of different buy-ins. So if somebody collected rabbits, if somebody was a guitar player, so it had a few different ways that you could market this to. And I like that when I've got a, a piece that will attract more than one buyer. If it was just like a cute bunny, then guitar playing people might not be interested in it, right? So this metal rabbit. Let me get my spreadsheet over here. Uh, I sold for $82 and I picked it up at an estate sale or garage. No, it was a garage sale for two bucks. This is a, from a garage sale that I did a, a ride along for. And I got quite a few metal uh, figural items. I got that bright green. I think it's all heaven. The frog. Maybe he just sold. I'm looking over there. I can't. He's not. He's not sitting there. But it was like a metal frog. Anyway, two bucks on this and he sold for $82. And it was only like, yay tall. It wasn't like ginormous either. So there's that one. This one, let's see. All right, I'm looking, oh, y'all are just talking about the bins in there. Bins are, so your bins are allowing kids, not, yeah. So that's the thing I'm worried about. We had COVID, but I don't wanna get it again. 
So, and I know they say like, you might not be able to get it again, or you have so much immunity. I don't, I don't care. I'm not going, I'm still recovering from it. It's awful. It's awful. Um, and some bids are saying no, no under 16. Hey, Mary. <laughs> All right. So next up, I don't sell a ton of books. Um, there's a lot of money to be made in books, but I like interesting books. This book I picked up because it looked cool. I got it of the bins. I loved the Art Nouveau cover. Uh, it is from uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne, which is a famous author. But I just thought, you know what? I know nothing about this book. It's 20 cents. The books that, that my bins are five for a dollar. So I thought, what have I got to lose? 20 cents on this cool looking book. I figured someone would use it as shelf art, right? Uh, so, but it, hang on, I lost my other tab. Where'd it go? Here it is. This book sold for $45 and I picked it up for 20 cents. Cool. Okay. Then this book, this is uh, an old New Testament, an Army Navy edition. Again, I got this one at an estate sale, but I got it because it was just old and cool. And, you know, I didn't know much about Army Navy editions of Bibles, Bibles. There's a lot of collectible. A lot of people collect Bibles, old Bibles. Um, so they're definitely worth looking into when you see them out. And uh, I paid a, a dollar for this one and this sold for $88. And this is one that the buyer was super interested in it. And he had done all this research on the name that was in it. This is the one, right? Uh, because also whenever I listed this one, I made sure to put what was inscribed on the inside. This is another tip for you. I'm not telling you this just for <laughs> randoms, but I put on the inside the name of the dude that was, that it was his Bible, right? Inscribed, da 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 blah, 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 blah. So in case somebody in his family was looking for this book or someone was doing some, uh, and what it ended up being was a genealogical thing. Uh, so he had, I mean, it was so interesting. He'd sent all this information. He had looked up the guy, looked up all of this stuff. And then he gave me like an invite to their like family. They had like a family page. Uh, what's it called? It's like a page where you can go and connect with. I can't think what it's called. Anyway, he invited me to like join their family, not reunion page, but where they all connect. And I was like, that's a very kind offer. <laughs> And it's a really cool information, but I, I'm not in your family. Sorry. It was nice. That was cool. Okay. So that sold, I think I told you it was $88. Definitely cool. All right. Next up was this. And I bought it because I didn't know what it was. Truly. This is a ceramic or yeah, like ceramic, really thick. And it was like finished green, this beautiful green that I love. Uh, but uh, yeah, I couldn't figure out for the life of me what it was when I bought it. And I thought maybe it's a planter or just random abstract art. Maybe I'm trying to think too much into this thing. Uh, it ended up being a speaker for a, a phone. This is before iPhones clearly because the phone, my iPhone would not fit through that hole, but like you would stick your phone in the hole and then it would like <laughs> spread the sound out. So that's what it is. But I got it because I just was like, what is this crazy thing? I love it. So this green speaker, I paid five bucks. And y'all know that's a lot for me. Five dollars to spend on something. Um, and it sold for $63. 63 bucks. Uh, Whitley, wait, wait. Okay, there's a couple questions. Let me, something wrong with my hand. Um, what's going on with my hand? I think I have carpal tunnel. And so it's not, it doesn't bother me too much. But when I start working a lot on the computers or I'm using my finger to do the mouse, my knuckle starts bugging me. So it helps. It's like a compression thing. There's nothing major wrong with it. It's just, I'm babying it. I don't know. I would think about that because Dolly wears one, but she doesn't wear it on her finger. She just wears it on this part of her hand, you know, um, that matches like skin tone because I think it's aging stuff. That's something to think about too. Uh, do I still sell jewelry craft lots? I do. I have enough to make a couple because I sold a bunch on my last live video. Okay. So how in the world? I, I, from, from viewers, I think, because in the whole video I was showing it and I think some, somebody must have looked it up and shared because I had no idea what this thing was. But yeah, and that's what it ended up being. And I think they found it like in a catalog or something like that. Yeah, superpowers. If only. All right. Next up. Where did it go? 
Next, oh, let me make me smaller. It's another rabbit. Here we go, figural items again. And then this has got a name to it. This, um, I can't, I can't, I think what it's called. Now I know, or now I clearly don't know anymore, but the name of this pattern on the rabbit has a name. Ah, oh, I did I put it right there, heron style. Um, so finding that out helped too, because some people collect that style of, and there's different animals painted with this blue pattern. It almost looks like little feathers or something, right? So this rabbit, I bought for $3 and sold it for $40. So that was a good sale right there. Then this I got at the bins. I love it. I love it. Love it. Um, a lot of times in the, at the Goodwill outlet, you know, people are looking for all kinds of different things. So a lot of people just flock to the clothes and some people are looking for Legos and picking out Lego pieces. And I love that I can find cool vintage stuff because apparently in my bins, there's not a ton of people looking for that. So I find really cool things and I'm just like, how does this end up here? So this is an antique art deco inkwell and pen rest. So the dome part, you know, come off and it would like open up and close. It was super cool. Probably paid about a dollar for it because my Goodwill outlet, it's a buck 49 a pound. This didn't weigh that much. So probably less than a dollar, but I put a dollar and it sold for $45. Pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, you have that rabbit in green. Sammy says, sweet. So it's still my keywords. Do it. Do it. Yeah, I totally harvest keywords from other people. You got to do that. You got to go see what are, what's working for people and harvest those words. All right, these I got in the Goodwill outlet as well. They're, again, figural items. I love them. Uh, and they were super cute. Let me see if I can make it bigger. How can I make it? Why is it so small? Oh, it's because this is small. Ugh. Make it bigger. They are these wooden napkin rings but i thought they were so i would have gotten them even if they didn't have this feature as well but they had these little eyes that were metal like beads but the most of them had other features like the rabbit has got like some little whiskers and a lot of them had leather features like the is it the waddle the waddle on the turkey was leather a little leather strap and the pig's tail and the turtle's tail was like a little leather pieces super cute so these wooden napkin rings I bought at the bins again and when I got them they were all strung together so I didn't have to go really digging for them either and they sold for $35 pretty cool aren't they fun they're so cute it's like one of those things that you're so tempted to keep and I'm like what am I gonna do with napkin rings I don't use napkin rings I don't use napkins no I'm kidding <laughs> napkins <laughs> that's what your sleeves are for no <laughs> All right, I got this in there on the outlet as well. So this is a gate top purse. So it's one of these like beaded purses. And then the top is this accordion looking thing. And mine was a wreck. It was wrecked, y'all. Look at that verdigree. Verdigree and part of the fabric was coming off of the, look, you can see the fabric was kind of coming off of the chain. It was a mess and it was still a really good sale. Got it in the bin, so paid probably less than a dollar for it. Let me scooch it so you can see the title as well. And it sold for 40 bucks. It If you find one that's not a giant wreck, it could sell for a hundred or more. But hang on, let me scoot myself up a little bit. But yeah, that's what I sold that one for. And from what I understand, I think it was a cosmetic brand or something like that. So it wasn't even like super duper old. It was vintage for sure, but it wasn't one of the crazy antique ones because I think it was almost like a promo. I'm, I think it was a promotional item unless I'm totally just misremembering, which is totally a snood. The waddle is down here, right? And the snood is up here. Is that what that is? Um, no, I have not. I have not. Um, okay. Then these I got also in the Goodwill outlet. These were drawer pulls, like, you know, drawer pulls. And they were metal and they were painted and they were also a mess, some of them. So you can see they're painted. Some were super chipped up, but 
pardon. Uh, some people are looking for that distressed look. If they've got a piece that they're working with, you know, that's kind of, I don't say banged up, but you know, looks they're making it look old or restoring something. Well, I guess if you were restoring it, you would, I don't know, whatever the reason <laughs> somebody bought them, the person bought one or two and then realized they wanted all of them. So in total, uh, it, they were about $77 is what I sell, um, ended up selling them for. I probably paid about a buck for them because yeah. How much did I, I originally had them listed where you could buy them one at a time in case somebody wanted, I only need three. I only need, you know, so I did quantity, whatever. And I feel like I had them at five bucks a pop or something like that, but Hey, they sold. That's that. Then nope, mute my phone. Next up, oh, this makes me miss the bins so much. I got this at the outlet as well. It's a stained glass frame and the breakable items at my Goodwill outlet were 20 items for a buck 99. So I could get, if I, and I tried to make sure I got 20 because that would maximize my profit potential. Um, so about 10 cents for this and where did it go again with my thing? Uh, it's sold for 35 bucks, $35. Uh, this is this uh, Ewok village that finally, you know, sold finally, but you know why I say finally is because I finally listed it. It was a beast. It was so big and I don't normally have really big stuff, but I got this before we moved to Austin. Uh, I have the ride along on here and I have some people who like have disputed the price that I got everything for, but you can go watch the ride along and you can hear the lady pricing things for me. Um, so I got all of this homeschool stuff cause we homeschool. And then they had all this GI Joe vintage GI Joe stuff and all this old star Wars stuff. Basically she only ended up charging me for the homeschool stuff. And then the GI Joe stuff and the Star Wars stuff. She was like, just take it, just take it. And there were people just walking past it at this garage sale. So I think I spent like 25 bucks total at the garage sale for the girl, for the homeschool stuff. And, and then all of this. So it was like maybe a buck to five bucks. I would say that I per item let, no, probably a buck. It was so much stuff. Um, and then I did like a whole separate haul video for the Star Wars stuff and the GI Joe and there was hot wheels, like old hot wheels so much. Anyway, <laughs> how did I package it? big? It was big. I mean, it came in pieces so I could take it apart and wrap it up, but it was just like, I still have, I think the millennium Falcon over there. I haven't listed seriously. And I have like the Darth Vader head. I finally listed the characters and I just like big stuff. It just, takes me forever to like, okay, let me do this. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's sitting there. It's just right there waiting. <laughs> My kids would love to play for it. I have a TIE fighter too sitting over there. Got to do it. It's only been like how many years? Three years? Horrible. Anyway, I sold this for uh, 250 bucks. I paid about a dollar for it and got um, 250 bucks for it. This is one that I did a video for too. So on eBay, you can insert a link, you know, but on Etsy, here's what I did. Can I make this bigger, smaller? How do I want to do this? I want you to see. So this is a good tip, especially because this is a big item and had a lot of working parts and a lot of pieces, a lot of stuff going on there. I didn't have enough photos to show everything, right? Uh, so what I did on eBay, I could link the video in there. But I made sure to put C video and on Etsy, I put the link to the video. And then if you're, you know, if you sell on eBay, I mean, if you are on, we don't want to hear that. If you're on YouTube, then you got your video up there forever and people can watch it. And yeah. So there's that. So then I could go around and like really get in and show the details and show the moving parts of it you know, and show like, oh, the guy will shoot out of here if you put him down the thing. So I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing, but just letting you know, like you can totally add some, and then somebody might stumble onto your video and say, oh, I want this. And then there you go. Go buy it. Ta-da. Tips galore today, y'all. Um, yeah. Etsy does let you have a video. It's like tw 20 seconds. It's super short. And then there's, unless they changed it, and then there was no audio in it either, or the ones, unless again, they, unless they changed that too. 
which is totally possible. <laughs> but um, so if you've got something that makes noise, does it make, I'll have to go listen or go look and see. But I, I think the ones that I had couldn't, you couldn't have audio on it. Um, do I end up with stuff that just doesn't sell? Yeah, I do. Um, I just leave it. I just forget it. I just try to like list it and forget it. And, but I do every now and then get a wild hair and I'm just like, I'm sick of looking at that thing. So I'll try to drop the price or if I get super annoyed with it, then I just donate it, redonate it. That's that. All right. Next is this wallet. Um, uh, and this one is an ostrich style clump. I didn't think it was really ostrich or I couldn't confirm that it was, oh yeah, genuine leather, but I couldn't confirm that it was genuine ostrich, but that's what like ostrich looks like generally. So this one I got for a buck and it sold for $45. Then next up, I forgot to share this video out <laughs> to let people know I was going live. It's not jewelry, so I probably won't have the same crowd. <laughs> All right, then this is a storyteller doll. Um, they're very popular. This is actually a reproduction one, but if you can find one that is an authentic storyteller doll, they are worth a lot of money. So this one was really a nice one, but again, uh, I'm trying to show you the bottom of it. Where's the bottom? There we go. So not a Native American made product as defined by blah, 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 blah. So that's how I knew it was a, like a reproduction one. So this one, I'm going to show you her derriere for a second. I bought for five bucks, even though it was, you know, like I say, a reproduction one. I knew that it would still sell because people really like these. And, and basically it's like a lady with a bunch of kids crawling all over her. <laughs> like think little old lady who lived in the shoe. Um, and it sold for 75 bucks. So that's that lady. Storyteller doll. This one, this is that big vase that I got at Goodwill back in Houston. Let's see. You see lots of those in Arizona. Yeah. Um, I got this vase at the Goodwill over in Houston. That's really vague. Uh, and I don't sell a lot of glass and like big vases and things like this, but it was just really drawn to the colors in this. It just looked gorgeous. I paid five bucks for it at the Goodwill there and it sold for $122. Sweet. Then I keep moving my things around and I keep losing them <laughs> there. Uh, okay, next up, <laughs> these pictures are awful. I'm just going to tell you right up front. I know they're awful, but this is a super long poster style. Like you can see, it's the length of my table. So it's probably, well, it's probably like three feet long or so. Um, 37 inches. There you go. Uh, and yeah, I was just trying to get these comic stuff listed, but this was a poster, like a fold out poster that was in a comic and I paid nothing for it because I got it. A friend of mine gave me nine boxes of comics and just gave them to me. And this sold for 30 bucks. It was in there. Also in that same lot was, this is just like a pull out, you know, paper size poster, but it was Bo Jackson. Those of you who remember, Bo knows, right? Um, and this, and this sold for $50. So just a, piece of paper with a picture of a dude. I'm sure he would appreciate that. Just some dude, you know, <laughs> he was, he was like crossover big time. Okay. Then this is a bike seat, a leather bike seat that I got in the bins. Again, I love that I can find cool stuff that a lot of people aren't looking for there. And I, so I paid maybe a buck for this and this leather bike seat sold for a hundred dollars. Let me check the chat before I go on. Oh, neat. Desert, Desert Dragonmark says there's storyteller dolls with animals. Cool. That would, that would be cool. All right. Then after that is this hat. I got this at an estate sale where I got a few different, I got some that had like clowns on them and like Shriners, 
you know, type deal. I wish I'd bought more of them because they were only a dollar. Some of them were pretty gross though. But I, I this one I, I was drawn to because it was just bright yellow. And I think this is a horse riding place or like polo. No, baseball. Okay. Now baseball hat. Oh, it's a country club. I ended up having to look it up because I just didn't know what it was. So, but I think with the name Dornick Hills, I thought maybe it was like some fancy place where they played polo. Sounds like it, right? Um, but in Oklahoma, do they play? I don't know. They probably do. What do I know? All right. So this one sold for $55. 55 uh, again, this came from the lot of comics that my friend gave me. And this one sold for 65 bucks. This is Spawn, number one. And again, Wolverine. This is a first appearance of Wolverine. And it sold for 40 bucks. I had to do a lot of research on those. Okay, this, I, for some reason, I could not find the listing that I deactivated on Etsy for this piece, but this one sold on eBay. Hang on, I'm waiting for it to kind of load, but this is another one that I ended up making a video for and ugh, we don't want the commercial. And it was a little marionette of Minnie Mouse. And I had to do a lot of research on this one too, because I thought she was so unique and I couldn't find anything like it. I found out eventually that it was a Pelham puppet, a Minnie Mouse. And I think I found one kind of similar in a museum in the UK. It was like, there was none to be found. And I picked this up at a garage sale in my neighborhood for a buck and ended up selling this Minnie Mouse marionette for $150. So cool. Again, just like looking for stuff that's like really unique. I've never seen anything like that before. You know, go with it. Then this one, I cannot remember exactly where I got it, but I bought it for five bucks. And where'd it go? And it sold for 65. Did I get it for five bucks? I feel like I did. I don't think I got this in the bins. Ah. Then this one I actually spent a lot on because, again, the price here is not what it actually sold for. This is the deactivated listing on, on Etsy. It sold on eBay. I paid 10 bucks for this because I just thought it was so cool. And I ended up selling it. I took a best offer of $40 for it on eBay. <laughs> I was kind of like, Mary's like, we're being so quiet. Oops. <laughs> so quiet and attentive. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was just super duper old, right? The mini was, because it wasn't marked or anything, but I had to a ton of, you know, it's like one of those you're worried you're going down the rabbit hole too far, but I'm glad I did. <laughs> I'm super glad I did. Okay, then the next item that we've got here is this. And this I got in the bins. And again, I got it out, didn't know what it was. At first I thought, well, maybe it's like one of these scissor pockets that, you know, quilters or people put on their walls, but then the little pocket parts are super tiny. So I just was like, well, I don't know what this is. It's really cool. It's beaded. Got home and looked it up and it's this Iroquois beaded wall pocket and it sold for 80 bucks. Again, this one, I took a best offer on eBay for it. So that's why the price is different. So I said, I, over here, I said I got it. Okay, it, it didn't get it in the bins. I paid two bucks for it somewhere. All right, I have to trust my inventory notes. That's why I put them there. So that's what that is. Again, I had to really do some looking for this and see. I feel like I got this in the bins though. Maybe not. Okay, I have to trust my own notes. That's why I, that's why I do it, <laughs> right? All right, so those were some of my best sales. I definitely found some really great stuff uh, last year and sold some nice things. If you're interested in checking out what jewelry I sold for the best profits, then check out my other video, Best Jewelry Sales of 2020. And again, if you are interested in learning more about print on demand, then this evening at 7 Central, the I say the guys, I guess I should say who the guys are. If you remember Merch Talk, we used to do the Merch Talk once a week. We're trying to bring it back once a month now. So it'll be Joe Clay, who's Merch University, Nick Eden, uh, Chris, who is Thrift Shop Hustler, and Jeff, who is Jeff. 
cost frog. All right. So I hope you guys can join us because we always have a great time together talking merch and just generally embarrassing ourselves. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you hopefully this evening. If not, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for being here, everyone. Bye.